Hello friends, in the previous video, we have seen different problems related to the simple stresses and strains. Related to the elastic constant, we have seen n number of problems. Now, here, one more important topic from the same chapter, that is compound section or you can say the member in series. If two or more members of the same material are connected together and are subjected to the loads, then the combination is called compound member. See, here one important principle is there. It is principle of superposition. When a member is subjected to the forces of its external as well as internal sections, then it is very difficult to determine the deformation of these members. To determine the deformation, the forces on member are split up in such a way that it maintains the equilibrium of individual as well as whole member. You can see this diagram here. A to B, that is first section. B to C is the second and C to D is third. So you can see the length L1, L2 and L3 also. Here you can see PA. The load is acting away from the plane. Here PB is acting on the plane here you can see PC, the direction is towards left. Here you can see the PD, the direction is towards right. See, you have to draw this diagram in this way. First of all, you have to divide the entire diagram into different sections. That is first, that is AB, another one that is BC, and third one is CD. Here you can see P1, here is also P1. For second section, we have the value P2, here you can see P2. Here in the third section, we have the value of P3, here also P3. That is equilibrium of an individual section. You can see P1 for first, P2 for second and P3 for third. See, then the net deformation in the member is the algebraic sum of the deformation of each individual part. This is called as principle of a superposition. See, net deformation is delta L is equal to delta L1 plus delta L2 plus delta L3. Means change in length of first member change in length of second and change in length of third member. See, one more important point that is composite section. We will see how to solve the problem of compound section that is member in series. And now this topic that is composite section means member in parallel. You can see this diagram. Here, this one is the material, first material and this one is second material. You can see this diagram and P is acting here. It is away from the body. You can see that is tensile. This is the section given to you. This is a cross section of members. This one is the first material. This one is the second material. If two or more members of a different material are connected rigidly together, and are subjected to the loads, then the combination is called as composite member. When a member subjected to, subjected two or more different material with a different cross section subjected to an axial force, the deformation in both members are same. Means the deformation of first material and the deformation of second material will be same. So here you can see that Delta L1 is equal to Delta L2. In the previous case, it was 
delta l is equal to delta l1 plus delta l2 plus delta l3 that is principle of super, superposition and that is related to what for compound section or you can say the member in series but here you can see member in parallel so the condition is delta l1 is equal to delta l2 see conditions are very important we know that delta l is nothing but p l upon a e but for first material that is p p l a e for first material is equal to p l upon a e for second material you know that sigma is equal to p by cross sectional area so here the formula is instead of p by a here we are putting sigma that is stress so stress 1 into l1 upon e1 is equal to stress 2 into l2 upon e2 but we know that the length for both members you can see for first material and for second material the length is same so l1 is equal to l2 so we can cancel this length term so here the formula will be sigma 1 upon e1 is equal to sigma 2 upon e2 and according to the formula we know that e1 is equal to e2 that is strain in first member is equal to strain in second material strain in first material is equal to strain in second material so we can write down this formula is a sigma 1 is equal to e1 upon e2 into sigma 2 is equal to m into sigma 2. So what is by this m? m is nothing but modular ratio that is e1 upon e2. But here the condition is e1 should be greater than e2. <coughs> this is a very important point you can highlight this point all the relations all the formulas are required to solve the problem and the next thing total load is equal to load shared by material 1 plus load shared by material 2 so P is equal to P1 plus P2 this is very important formula to solve the problem p is equal to p1 plus p2 and we know that p is nothing but stress into area so here p is equal to sigma 1 into a1 plus sigma 2 into a2 so you can see modular ratio it is the ratio of modulus of elasticity of two materials it is denoted by small m m is equal to e1 upon e2 where the condition is e1 is greater than e2 that is a model ratio see here i am going to explain you one problem related to the member in series that is compound member see this is the formula delta l is equal to delta l1 plus delta l2 plus delta l3 that already i explained you that is principle of super superposition and we know that delta l is nothing but p l upon a so delta l1 that is for first section delta l2 that is for second and delta l3 for third accordingly for first second and third we have to take delta l is equal to p l upon a p l upon a p l upon a the load will load for every section will be different length will be different area will be different and e will be different young's modulus will be different sometimes uh, all value of load length area and young's modulus will be given to you just you have to put the values and you have to calculate the answer here just see the first problem a circular bar having 200 mm square area it is subjected to the axial load as shown in figure. Find the value of P and the total elongation take E is equal to 200 kN per mm square. See, see this given diagram. The diagram is given. 
here you can see 50 newton is acting toward left this p is acting towards right this 35 kilo newton is acting here it is acting towards left 65 kilo newton is acting here that is acting towards right we know that the equilibrium condition we have to put equilibrium condition first the circular bar having 200 mm square area the subjected cross section area is given that is 200 mm square young's modulus is given that is e given in kilo newton you have to convert into newton per mm square so you can see e is equal to 200 kilo newton per mm square is equal to 200 into 10 raised to 3 newton per mm square here you have to find out the value of p that is unknown and the value of delta l you have to find see first section this one is the second section and this one is the third section so you can see in this diagram the diagram is divided into three part this one is your first second and third here you can see that first diagram the length is 500 this length is 600 mm and this length is 700 means we have the value of l1 that is 500 l2 that is 600 and l3 that is 700 means we have l1 l2 and l3 now here for the equilibrium of a entire bar you have to consider summation of fx is equal to 0 summation of fx is equal to 0 left side you have to consider the force which is moving towards left side that is negative right side that is positive so here 50 kN is moving towards left so minus 50 p is moving towards right so plus p again 35 kN is moving towards left so minus 35 and 65 kN is moving towards right so plus 65 is equal to 0 that is condition of equilibrium so here minus 50 plus p minus 35 plus 65 is equal to 0 there is only one unknown you can find out the value by using calc you will get answer p is equal to 20 kilo newton see now you have the value here you have to start from this 50 kilo newton is moving towards this direction so 50 kilo newton towards left so to maintain the equilibrium condition here is also away from the body that is 50 kilo newton this force is tensile so here will be tensile that is 50 kilo newton but here the value of p is 20 kN at this section at this point the p is 20 but here that is 50 kN to get the answer 20 you have to take 30 kN towards left means 50 kN is moving towards right side 30 kN is moving towards left side the combined effect will be 20 kN towards right so we want 20 kN towards right so here you have to take 30 kN towards left so 30 kN towards left to maintain the equilibrium condition you have to take 30 kN away from the body now see here is 30 kN here is also 30 kN next the third member here they have shown you 35 kN but here that is 30 kN to maintain the condition 30 kN is moving towards this direction but we have to show 35 kN here so this 30 moving towards left direction so 30 plus 35 that is 65 you have to take 65 here 65 kN you will get here also 65 kN now both values are same means equilibrium condition is maintained you can see here 65 kN you have to just draw first member first section second and third and you have to calculate the value of p1 p2 and p3 as per the equilibrium condition 
by using free body diagram you can see this is your free body diagram we will get answer p1 p2 and p3 that already i explained you this diagram should be equal to this because conditions are very important here p is 20 kN here 35 kN is moving towards left 65 kN is moving towards right so without changing the effect you have to calculate the value of p1 p2 and p3 that we have calculated all the values are away from the body that is a tensile sometimes the value will be uh, towards the body that is compressive so here we have the value of p1 p2 and p3 we have the value of l1 l2 and l3 so the deformation in bar 1 deformation in bar 2 and deformation in bar 3 we know that delta l is nothing but pl upon ae delta l2 is equal to pl upon A ae for second material delta l3 is equal to pl upon ae for third section here we have the value of p1 l1 a1 and e1 similarly here we have the value of p2 l2 a2 and e2 here we have the value of p3 l3 a3 and e3 you have to just put the value of p1 that is 15 to 10 raised to 3 into l that is 500 area that is 200 and value of young's modulus is, that is 200 into 10 raised to 3 similarly you have to put all the values for delta l1 for delta l2 and for delta l3 here you will get the answer delta l1 is equal to 0.625 mm delta l2 is equal to 0.45 mm delta l3 is equal to 1.1375 mm see we know that as per the principle of superposition net deformation is equal to delta l is equal to delta l1 plus delta l2 plus delta l3 you have to add the the value of delta l1 plus delta l2 plus delta l3 here you will get the answer that is 2.2125 mm see alternative method is also there here we know that delta l is equal to delta l1 plus delta l2 plus delta l3 here the cross section all the members subjected cross section area is same young's modulus for the entire section it's same so you can take common one upon a you can take as a common and then we have the value of p1 l1 plus p2 l2 plus p3 l3 you will get answer in mean time by using this alternative method you can use any method but the important thing is to draw this free body diagram very carefully and then by using principle of superposition you can calculate the value of p1 p2 and p3 some sometimes the area 1 area 2 and area 3 will be different length will be different sometimes length will be similar see according to you have to take the value of p1 l1 a1 e1 uh, likewise so here you can solve the problem of member in series by using this principle of superposition see we have different uh, shapes see here you can see that this is your another problem in this problem the diameter of first one that is different diameter of second one is different diameter of third one so here the area one area two area three will be different accordingly just you have to change the values and you will get the answer the remaining things are same you can see p1 p2 p3 and p p4 here you have first of all you have to draw the free body diagram you have to uh, draw free body diagram then you you have to calculate the net deformation see university problem is also there we have very less time but you can see the problem is for 10 marks in the university question paper you will get this type of problem see just by using simple principle of superposition you have to solve the problem you will get 10 marks just you have to find out the delta l that is change in length you can see here by using simple formulas you will get the answer
here i am going to take one more problem related to the composite member that is member in parallel already i explain you member in parallel some important formulas are there you can see the important formula deformation are same in each material that already i explain you delta l1 is equal to delta l2 in the previous case in the case of series delta l is equal to delta l1 plus delta l2 but in this case delta l is equal to delta l1 is equal to delta l2 means deformation are same in each material if length are same then strain each strain in each materials are also same means e1 is equal to e2 we know that e1 that is strain of first material e2 is the strain of second material so formula is sigma 1 upon e1 is equal to sigma t upon e2 and we know that total load is nothing but p is equal to p1 plus p2 see so many problems are there you can take any problem as example we will take one university problem you can see this problem you have to read each and every problem very carefully here the problem is from december 2010 for 10 marks see in this chapter we have n number of problems during the exam you have to do the proper selection of problems because in 3 hours we have to cover entire paper so you have to reach you have to see each and every problem very carefully read each and every problem very carefully then write down the given data and after that after getting the uh, data by using the formulas by using the different condition after identifying the problem you can solve that problem very easily a tube of aluminium 40 mm external diameter and 20 mm internal diameter is fitted on solid steel rod of 20 mm diameter the composite bar the word is given the composite bar you can see this problem a tube of aluminium 40 mm external diameter and 20 mm internal diameter is fitted on a solid steel rod of 20 mm diameter the composite bar is loaded in compression by an axial load p find the stress in aluminium when the load is in such a that the stresses in steel is 70 newton per mm square 70 newton per mm square also find the value of p take es is equal to 2 into 10 raised to 5 newton per mm square and young's modulus for aluminium that is e al is equal to 7 into 10 raised to 4 newton per mm square here you can see the problem tube of aluminium is given steel rod is fitted inside the aluminium tube so you have to draw this diagram first see this one is a steel rod it is fitted inside the aluminium you can see this is the aluminium tube here you can see this one is steel and steel is fitted inside the aluminium you can see this diagram so the diameter of aluminium tube there is capital d is given that is 40 mm you can see this is the 40 mm inside diameter of tube is given that is 20 and steel is fitted inside the aluminium so the rod diameter of steel is also 20 mm so here you can see steel rod that is ds is equal to 20 mm and you can see sigma s is given that is 70 newton per mm square 
here e s is equal to 2 into 10 raised to 5 newton per mm square and e l that is young's modulus for aluminium is equal to 7 into 10 raised to 4 newton per mm square so as per the condition we know that we have different conditions but for the composite section we know that the condition is for similar length strain of first material should be equal to strain of second material means strain of steel is equal to strain of aluminium so here by using the formula first of all you have to calculate area of a steel area of steel to we know that pi by 4 into d s square you will get the value of area of steel here you can calculate the area of steel that is 314.16 mm square that is the area of steel area of a first material that is steel area of aluminium you can see the aluminium this is the aluminium tube that is hollow section hollow circular section so formula will be pi by 4 into in bracket d square capital d square minus small d square bracket complete so value of capital d that is 40 value of small d that is 20 after putting the value of uh, outer diameter and inner diameter you will get the area of aluminium is equal to 942.48 mm square now we have the uh, value of area of steel and area of aluminium so here strain of steel is equal to strain of aluminium we know that es is nothing but sigma s upon es sigma is equal to sigma aluminium upon young's modulus of aluminium here we have the value of young's modulus of steel then value of sigma of steel and young's modulus of aluminium there is only one unknown that is sigma al you can calculate we have the value of sigma s that is 70 newton per mm square young's modulus for steel that is 2 into 10 raised to 5 we don't have the value of aluminium stress of aluminium so sigma al is unknown upon young's modulus of aluminium that is 7 into 10 raised to 4 so here you will get the value sigma aluminium is equal to 24.5 newton per mm square here now we have the value of sigma of aluminium also now we have to calculate load according to the condition the third condition is total load is equal to load share by steel plus load share by the aluminium so p is equal to ps plus pal p, uh, load share by steel plus load share by aluminium we know that ps is equal to stress into area of a steel plus p of aluminium is nothing but stress of aluminium into area of aluminium now here we have the value of sigma s we have the value of area of s we have the value of stress of aluminium and area of aluminium after putting the values you will get total load is equal to 45.08 kilo newton so by using only two condition first condition is strain of steel is equal to strain of aluminium and the second condition is total load is equal to load share by first material plus load share by second material by using these two conditions you can solve the problem of composite bar and see the marks that is 10 the next lecture we will see another problem from the same chapter thank you thank you very much